What's a small town dark secret you know? A few months ago there was a brief media kerfuffle in the local papers about someone breaking into a barn and attacking a pony. The account that made it to the papers tactfully omitted the fact that by attack they mean sexual assault. I learned this via a Facebook post shared by a classmate of mine who was friends with the owners of the horse. At a time not specifying exactly where this took place beyond somewhere in the East Midlands, England. In my mother's ex-town there is a box full of automatic weapon and grenade buried somewhere, my grandfather had been a partisan in Italy during World War II and at the end of the war his unit instead of handing arms to the government forces decided to hide them in case the Soviets had invaded the he is dead and with him also the position of the box. The only other person besides me and my mother who knows about the box is the last man alive of his unit. Not mine, but my grandmother used to read coffee grinds for neighbors and friends a form of fortune telling. She didn't believe in it, but it was a way to pass the time when she was a young mother back in the 50s 60s. One day she was reading a neighbor's grinds and said oh, strange. It says you have a baby. The neighbor, who was a single female in the same conservative immigrant community as my grandmother, got skittish and said my grandmother was wrong. My grandmother was like, honey no, look at this cup. That's a baby symbol. And her neighbor starts sobbing. Turns out, she had gotten pregnant as an older teenager, been sent away to have the kid, and ended up giving the baby away to a married friend who lived across the country. And now my grandmother was the only one in town who knew. She stopped reading cups for years after that one. Way too awkward. A kebab shop in my hometown has an underground casino and sells food at the back door after closing hours. One of the local utility companies around me had some mysterious fires a while back. A bunch of paperwork and engineering plans went up in this fire, while the company was being investigated for mismanagement of funds and some of their newer facilities not being to the correct specs. It was ruled an accident. And they got an insurance payout. Our local cinema owner would cut out dirty scenes back when movies came on film rolls. For decades, all those butter jokes about Last Tango in Paris went over my head. We didn't catch on until Phoebe Kate's bare titties were conspicuously missing from our cut of fast times at Ridgemont High. Brother and sister slept together. Everyone found out, the sister disappears for almost 10 years. Rumor was she'd killed herself out of embarrassment. Out of the blue she popped back up one day, thinking hoping? We'd all forgotten. Nobody forgot, but nobody mentions it, either. Village next to my town. A stable is found with a dozen dead cows and more barely alive, standing in a literal meter of their own excrement. Neighbors claim that they didn't notice anything, that the farmer didn't seem unusual, but I heard that they all knew that he was completely neglecting these animals, that he was an alcoholic and that he threatened his neighbors to set their farms on fire if they dared to report anything. The surviving cows are okay now and were taken away from him. An extremely wealthy grandma had an affair with a pool boy. He called it quits and she accidentally ran him over and killed him. I don't remember if she actually caught a charge for it, but she didn't do any time. The family knows it was deliberate, talks about it nonchalantly like don't piss grandma off, she ran over the last man that crossed her. Edit grammar. Small UK town. Man taken to hospital, dies on arrival. Local news had announced that police were looking to speak to witnesses, then announced police have upgraded it to a murder investigation. A few days later, some guys are arrested in connection to the case a couple of months pass and they're sentenced to prison for murder. That's all that was made public. Heard through some friends who have family working at the local hospital that the victim had power drill inflicted injuries to every joint in his body. Grapevine says he sexually assaulted the underage daughter of one of the guys who then murdered him. Family was burned alive when a house caught fire. Rumor has it, their daughter's boyfriend was jealous and set the house on fire. Neighbors heard their screams, but couldn't help. Canadian here. Our equivalent to CPS Child Protective Services is called Cass Children's Aid Society here. Their entire office is a joke here and for about a month a while back it was impossible to do anything with them because they devoted the entirety of their resources to full-scale damage control. They had removed four kids from the home of a well-known heroin addict in town. Problem was, she had five kids. For some inconceivable fucking reason they removed all the olders and allowed her to keep the newborn. Only a couple weeks old. The cast visit was prompted after a postnatal follow-up that was either questionable or missed entirely. I'm not super sure on that. The same fucking night that all the olders are removed Mommy Dearest decides to spike herself before bed. In her opiate-induced slumber she rolled onto the newborn and smothered him. Their damage control worked too. It never made the papers or anything as far as I have seen. The only reason I found out was because I was trying to help a friend deal with a serial child abuser ex of hers and when nothing was happening with the cast we went instead to the police. The officer we spoke to was more than happy to let us know why we'd never get anywhere with those incompetent cocksuckers.
His words, I live in a super small town see all the same people constantly. And back in the 80s there was a group of guys my mom went to high school with who were rumored to have killed this poor old man in town and robbed his house blind of drugs and nice belongings. They got away clean except for one of the idiots decided to shit in the sink. The police collected the sample but at the time there wasn't the technology to find out who the shit belonged to. Well around 10-15 years later they finally had the technology and they tested that sample. They found out who it belonged to and the guy ended up in prison after getting away with it for so long. My hometown has a famous drug addict i.e. everyone knows who he is. He's lived there for 70 years and his crimes are town gossip. Most of the time it's small stuff stolen bikes and once a canoe that he just leaves somewhere, living in a park when he doesn't feel like going home for a few days, shit like that. He's mostly seen as a harmless, funny character. His brain is seriously damaged after hard drug use since his early teens. What is rarely mentioned is that when he still had a house he used to steal dogs and beat them to death in his basement. Growing up, our mayor had two teenage children and a baby. It was common knowledge the baby was the offspring of his two kids. It was just one of those things people didn't talk about. After he left office, his daughter gave birth to a kid by him as well. And, no. I did not grow up in Alabama. A kid in my grade tried to rob an old lady. I think she was 98 years old and living by herself. After school one day he went to her house and broke in through the back door. Apparently she was going to be robbed without a fight and had a gun with her. As he went to disarm her the gun went off and broke a window. He got the gun away from her and strangled her to death. He started to panic and shoved her into a closet so no one would find her. A week or two later the neighbors called the police because something smelled horrible and the police arrived and found her body. I guess the kid went back and tried to make it easier to hide the body by cutting it up and placing the pieces all over the house. When the police finally recovered all the remains, the autopsy showed that she might have been raped. The kid just got a life sentence with no chance for parole. Not exactly a secret, but it's still dark. A lady from my hometown married and killed Phil Hartman. It's not exactly a dark secret in the same sense as most of these, because it's not a crazy scandal. But my town is one of those stereotypical yuppie suburban little Massachusetts towns, expensive homes, upper middle class, pretty much 100 white, the usual for the area. And people are just starting to realize that it's full of heroin. Every single person I know knows at least two people who have overdosed and died. That's not an exaggeration. I know two myself who are close family friends, plus another who died but was revived. It's sad as hell. My town started a campaign a while back to try to bring awareness to the epidemic it seems like it's only getting worse. My town is not unique. There are so many of the same stories small towns with a dark secret. The opioid crisis in New England is a scary, depressing thing. Added I was always aware that heroin was everywhere, I guess the emphasis on New England was more to say that around here, it seems like nobody thinks it could be so bad in such an idyllic and classy read mostly suburban, affluent and white area. For those asking where I'm at. We'll just say Norfolk. Close enough. A guy jumped off a really tall building in my hometown. Ruled a suicide, but rumor has it that he was forced to jump, or physically thrown off the building, due to his dealings with organized crime. The Devil House. Now, it had been around my hometown for decades. Enough different generations of kids had their own mythos. I had an English teacher that went to the same school in the late 80s. By then it was vacant but someone had painted a pentagram on the wall. You had to know where it was pull over on the old highway coming into town at a certain point. There was no driveway or anything, but you could see a gate if you knew where to look. Then you go into the woods a bit and bam, it almost appears out of nowhere on you. That's how well it was hidden. For the most part, every high school class would have a couple of people venture out to see it and leave their own small mark. Everyone was just sure Satanists or witches were meeting there occasionally. But later, I found out the real story from my dad. I'd asked him, but he didn't make the connection between that house's original purpose and the later myths until I showed him. The reason that Hidden House was built was for a former wealthy farmer's lesbian daughter. Didn't have the heart to disown her, so he hid her away there in the late 60s. Because 60s, there were some wild parties out there and girls were converted to lesbianism red, already knew damn well they were gay so of course that small southern town assumed the devil was behind it. We have a scenic cliffside really close to town where a lot of dog walkers go. It has established paths and fences as well as a road running 10 meters away from the edge. It's a hot spot for suicide but I only found out about it from a Coast Guard friend while she was drunk that they are always on the lookout for bodies at the foot. She said about 10 on average were found a year which is massive for our small town. 
It was surreal BC I had lived there my whole life and none were ever reported or anything. There were Samaritan organizations that did patrols every now and then but they were fairly quiet about it. A high school boy killed his sister while driving drunk out on farm roads. He became, essentially, the town pariah, but wouldn't leave the area. Worked at the local grocery store as a bagger, never did move up. Nobody ever acknowledged him other than to give him dirty looks, even years later. I don't remember anyone ever actually discussing why everyone hated him, but we all seemed to know anyway, even the newcomers. A girl in my graduating class of 23 kids had a ton of parties at her house. Her mother was only like 15 years older than us and she always also attended these parties. At one of these parties, two boys in my class attempted to woo the girl's mother. They ended up actually having a menage a toy with her mom. I moved away from that small town when I was a sophomore but I will never forget that poor girl who had a mom that got tag teamed by some high schoolers. Edit sorry guys, I meant menage a trois. My years of school French failed me. Also there are a lot of people that have similar stories I guess this incident took place in a small town in Missouri. This was in a small town, generally run by a half dozen big family names that almost act like redneck mafia families cartels. If you're related to one of those families, you can figuratively get away with murder and sometimes quite literally. Years back, one of the locals R, was supposedly out deer hunting drinking, and noticed a not from around here guy out horse riding in the woods. R just shot him and left him out in the woods to die. Either for shits and giggles, or because the guy was from California, as R likes to claim. He tends to get drunk and brags about it frequently, so it's more common knowledge than a secret. Nothing has ever been done though, since he's from one of the big families in the area and is related to several officers, a former judge, and a decent chunk of the town. The cops never bothered investigating just said it was an accidental shooting, and there was no evidence or suspects. Same story they gave when some kids found a couple dead migrant workers in a drainage ditch behind the high school my senior year cops just said we'll never know and that was it. God, I hate that town. Edit went back and looked up some old articles to refresh my memory. The guy who got shot was a 20-something ranch hand from another nearby small town not from Cali, and apparently there actually was an investigation later, but only after a local author wrote a book about it. Still unsolved, for what it's worth. A guy from my grad year went missing about a year ago. There was a massive search in my small, western British Columbian town. People freaking out left right and center, the whole shebang. It was a weird feeling, this guy was friends with a few really really good friends of mine. Anyhow, so then somebody finds him driving nearby Edmonton and it turns out he ran off because he knocked up a girl in my grad class. What was kinda shitty was how his parents failed to mention to the police that some of his clothes and belongings were missing. So that's basically 90 of what people my age have been talking about edit I really should have read the rest of the thread before I realized just how over my head I am. Edit 2 you're all delightful and I feel very validated. I live in Bad Neuenar, Germany and Rex Tillerson once stayed here for a G7 conference. He resided in a local hotel which was directly above a series of tunnels that were dug there before World War I in search of new geysers and well springs my town is a therapeutic baths town. And people knew that you could basically move throughout the town undetected and they are not mapped anywhere, since the plants got lost in a World War II bombing raid I believe. So tunnels basically, not much of a secret as it hit the news but probably not known outside Nova Scotia. About 10 years ago a little girl went missing and her mother reported it even going on the news asking for her daughter to return. A week or so later her body was found and the whole town mourned, leaving teddy bears where her body was found. It was discovered that the mother murdered her because she didn't want her new BF to leave her as he didn't want kids. I was living in a different province during the time but when I came back that was all people were talking about. I remember the cover of the local paper having an article about it saying the girl pleaded with her mother to stop before she was smothered with a pillow. Edit I just googled and she was actually strangled and the mom was back in court just last year. I was dating this girl from rural Maine. I mean really fucking rural, western Maine near the Appalachian Trail. I'm hanging out with her family one summer shooting guns, shotgunning shitty beer, and sharing hunting stories. One of the guys there starts talking about how he likes to hunt hikers on the trail. He'll even take pot shots with his rifle, fucking up their campsites at night that kind of shit. He also claimed he came across this older woman camping a bit off the trail, raped her, made her write some fake note about how she starved, then killed her. The other guys were laughing and back slapping him while I sat there drunk as fuck and in total disbelief. I hope he was just bullshitting but at the time I was glad I had a shotgun in my lap. Never high cologne in rural Maine. In my best Robert Stack voice update I've contacted the Maine State Police and gave them all the info I had. 
They said they'd look into it. If anyone lives in Maine keep an eye on the news and you might see something in the coming weeks. That the daughter of a former sheriff is the person who ran over and killed another girl, but her dad had it covered up he was the actual sheriff when it happened. All because the other girl had been seeing the same guy she liked. I was researching my hometown's history for a project in middle school and discovered that there were various KKK meetings held behind my elementary school sometime in the 1900s. Edit typo, down the street from the house I live in is a forest with a disused gravel road going into it. If you follow the road, there's an abandoned house inside the forest with all the furniture and stuff still inside. When I was a kid, that place was our secret fort. My friends and I used to go and play there all the time, until my mom told me what that place actually was. See, back during Vietnam, one of my mom's school friends lived there with her husband and three kids. A bunch of young guys, including her husband ended up going to the war. Unfortunately, her husband was killed out there. Grieving and without money or a job, the young woman killed her children and then herself. The place is owned by her mother now. Never ever went back to that place. Small family sever it. My grandma told my grandpa to kill himself. He went out to the garage and closed the door. He started the car and died of asphyxiation. I'm told that she knew he was dying and did nothing. After he died, she inherited a ton of money and disowned us. Sometimes I see her and she pretends she doesn't know me. A kid of a politician was pistol whipped then his body was burned out in the woods, all over two grams of stolen pot. There was a male cop in our town who got fired for having sex with a woman in his patrol car. The secret was, it wasn't a woman, it was a man. The only reason I know of it is because the former cop is my fiancé's uncle. A kid I went to high school with took a kid up into the mountains and made him dig his own grave. Have a road that I took on the way to my local community college that is as rural as it gets. I've been driving with old college teammates roommates when we've come across a trail of fire into the woods at night time in a flaming circle in the middle of that. I've had two very strange occurrences on this road. The first was a goat that walked up and nudged my driver's side door when I was stopped at a stop sign on the road. Obviously this scared the life out of me so we floored it about two miles down before we turned around. And I swear to god the goat was right there in the road. There's no explanation for how fast it ran in my opinion. Second. I've seen coyotes killed in pairs and with their skin pulled up like hoods over their heads on two occasions. The coyotes have been placed in two different locations and have both been laid together. Strange stuff. Added after all the comments I'm only more freaked out. Thanks guys. Lo led it to reading through some more more replies. I have a picture of the coyotes I sent in a group message to some guys from school a while back. I'll see if I can dig it up. Also the area would literally make your skin crawl. Goosebumps etc. was a very uncomfortable area to drive through and after the incident with the fire I've never drove through again at night. Edit 3 old GM has since been deleted it's been over a year and neither of my friends have it neither. Edit 4 looked up skinwalkers. Thank you no one. I am horrified. I there is a large section of pine barrels that is fenced off with multiple authorized access trespassing etc. posted about. The fence is in the shape of a triangle. Each leg of the triangle goes for a good. 300-400 yards. There's no roads leading to it, no gates, or openings. Constantine wire up top running the entire length. We've noticed two very concealed cameras while walking the parameter. I'm sure there are more of those. It's a good two miles from the closest fire trail and even further to any roads. Everybody we've asked about it say they never heard of it. Who knows? Maybe it's some fenced in sewage drain pond or something. The lack of access is the weirdest part though. They are definitely trying to keep someone out or something in. QX Files song edit some of you have asked if Google has any overhead shots of the place. Now, it's been about two years since my last visit so I could be wrong on the location but I think I found it. The road nearby was 100 not there when I was there so unless it's a new road I may have the wrong spot but. Take a look for yourself. Pop these chords in Google Maps. 39.687804, 74.629900. Edit 2 I'm an ass, it's actually been about 5 or 6 years since I've been there. Edit 3 looks like the patched parcel is 500 by 1000 feet. This may just be the standard block size of each section but if the relative size does add up to what we saw. I do think the fence is in a triangle formation still, I just think if it's patched over in Google, they just pop a template block down. Kinda late for the party but anyway the dude that stuck a perfume bottle up his ass to impress a girl on a webcam. My city ain't so small anymore tripled the population in the last 20 years but back when I was 14-15 the dude was by far the most prominent urban legend in here. As it turns out, he wasn't that much of a legend as 100 real, and yes he very much ended up in the hospital after the fact. Never met the guy personally but one of my best friends and basically a big brother through my teen years was in the same class as him in high school. 
The bottle in question was shaped like a cigar so it ain't as bad as you are picturing it, but it's still a bottle. Oh and there's also the black utilitarian ghost car that kills people in the night but that's probably just gangs. Edit didn't expect people to notice this so here's some answers he did it cause she asked to, simple as that. Probably some girl into pegging or something. To his credit, no one ever found out who the girl is so he kept her privacy at least. Al Tuff some people pointed out he might have done it for his own pleasure and came up with the story to cover up and in 15 years I never thought to question it and now I feel dumb lol. My neighbor two doors down killed her husband. Poisoned him slowly with rat poison. She then became the neighborhood crazy cat lady and poisoned most of them too. She then died suddenly one day. Autos P report concluded that it was rat poison. Most people know about her killing herself and the cats. I'm not sure how many people knew that she poisoned the husband though. There is a cryptid frogman that roams my town. Not a dark secret, but this thread is getting too dark. My grandpa's favorite story was that he and a friend accidentally burnt down the town's ice house when they were seven. He always said that the town never knew. I was talking to one of his friends that grew up with him at my grandpa's funeral. When I told him the story he laughed and told me how it actually went down. The entire town knew what happened. However due to their age and the fact that that my grandpa and his friend put out the fire they weren't held accountable. Many years later my family found a newspaper detailing the event. DDLR my grandpa thought that no one knew he burnt down an ice house, but the entire town knew and let him live with the guilt. The opioid related deaths identified to people outside the family as aneurysms, heart attacks, or natural causes. This was about 15 years ago in my pretty large country hometown. Me and my friends would always mess around in the woods that was near some fields. Just shooting off fireworks we stole from our parents or just playing with cans of axe and lighters. One day luckily when I wasn't there things got out of hand and all the fields caught on fire. This is a farming town so a lot of these fields were connected and it soon rapidly spread to 50 acres of woods. On the upside the fire actually helped clear out some old brush and made the land more fertile to grow on. Or Canada. When the government opens crown land to cattle grazing, landowners have about a week to make sure their fences are good before the ranchers move their cattle. One wheat farmer in this small town didn't get to his fences in time. While fixing a fence, he got into an argument with a rancher whose cattle were on crown land and on his property eating his wheat. Turned violent. Rancher ended up with a broken leg and was left in the woods by the farmer. He drags himself to his vehicle and calls for help on his CB radio. Gets rescued. In the interim, the farmer confesses to his priest. Church decides to intervene. Church members convince the rancher and his family not to press charges. The church members become slave labor to the rancher while his leg heals meals, house cleaning, repairs, gardening, etc. This goes on for three or four months until the rancher is back on his feet. Freaks me out how far they will go to protect one of their own. There was a young lady with the last name Hussein who was murdered at the laundromat. It was many years ago and went unsolved, but there's a guy who everyone says has bragged about doing it. Disgusting, but with a town that is full of rednecks and has only two semi-retired cops, who's going to do anything? Back in the 1940s there was a lynching of a black man that only the older blacks in town mention. I guess it's the typical story of a black man supposedly whistling or speaking to a white woman. He gets arrested, angry mob forms outside prison and they release him to the mob. I've asked around to the older blacks and a lot of them remember it, or their parents told them of it but when I've asked the older whites generally same age almost none of them have heard of it. There was a few who did and they would just say it was different times or say the details aren't fully known. High school teacher in a smallish southern town was known to be very friendly with the students. She was rumored to have sex with the older boys but nothing ever happened. Until a couple years ago when a Snapchat video surfaced of the entire football team running a train on her. Some students at my high school were at a pasture party in a nearby town that's much smaller than mine. The sheriffs showed up to break it up and one kid jumped over a barbed wire fence and tore open his scrotum and is now sterile. I'm not sure how dark or secretive this is, but still an amusing small town story. Anyway, during my senior year of high school, I was looking to get a job for the summer before college. Several of my friends worked at the local ice cream rest stop, so I asked my friend Mike if he thought he could help get me a job there. He looked into it but returned with the news that they weren't hiring. Later that summer irked the shop closed down, so I asked Mike what the deal was. He relayed to me that it was really just a matter of time due to the owner's management style. That being chronic alcoholism and a severe gambling addiction. She ran her establishment off of the contributions of her wealthy husband while she wasted away all the revenue at the local casino or getting drunk. Her husband finally had enough and cut her off and had her shut the store down. Apparently she would regularly fuck things up in the kitchen and blame all her teenage employees. Also, 
she'd force them to add jalapenos to the sandwich orders of any Hispanic patrons, claiming, no, they love it, put it on anyway one time she even pissed herself and adamantly refused it despite the indisputable odor and wet pants. So yeah, I'm kinda glad I worked at Subway that summer. Our tiny mountain is actually a dormant volcano. My school's last superintendent got fired for WWE style throwing a guy through a table during a meeting. That an acquaintance's dad doctor physician in a small town raped sexually abused her which she had blocked out. He kept quiet about it until she came out of anesthetic from a surgery, some kind of liver issue due to alcoholism from the abuse and suddenly remembered it all. He bought her a house in a different small town so he could shut her up. He literally used her mental illness that he caused against her to save his own skin. It was so fucked up and sad her life is the saddest train wreck ever because of it. I hope he gets ass raped in hell. I lived in a small town deep in the English countryside. There was a forest near the main part of our little village where people would walk their dogs or just go for a stroll. But at night time, no one would dare go there. There was a man, who we all referred to as the Duke who took people into the forest and had sex with them. Me and my friend went for a late night drive once and saw a bunch of cars parked in the forest. We decided to park as well and sit in the dark for a while. We see another truck drive in and weird looking people come out of the pitch black forest to chat with them. We saw this huge fat man who seemed to be organizing this woodland orgy and we knew straight away that he was the duke. Some people started walking up to our car after a while, we don't know if they saw us or not but we sped out of there and they chased us down the road. We got away thankfully. I haven't been back since but I've heard that he's still active and holds a lot of leeway in the village. I had a friend, who used to be very caring for everyone around in his life. He had a guy who used to be his classmate. They were kind of best friends. Once the guy was upset and didn't came to the class for more than a week. My friend called him up and asked him where the hell he is, the guy mentioned he was on the bank of river which flows through our city and was trying to commit suicide. My friend asked him to hold on. He took my bike keys and went to the guy to save his life but he never returned. After two days of constantly searching for him the police found his dead body on the bank of the same river. The case was closed as a suicide case. But I will tell you the truth. This was a foolproof plan. The guy and my friend were in love with the same girl. So the guy planned to call him up to the place and pushed him into the river. Unfortunately my friend didn't know how to swim so he drowned. We have proofs for what exactly happened and reopened the case but we are just receiving the dates from the court no judgment. And the guy is walking in the city like nothing ever happened. It's a true story and my friend was very close to me even. I do miss him a lot. But helpless we are with the system and government. Hope his soul rest in peace, folded hands. A uh, cold case? A couple was killed in 1990 and it has never been solved. Why? The husband tried to drop out of the redneck gang essentially. And the group didn't like that he knew too much info so they went to the house in the middle of the night and killed them. Left the wife's body in front of the front door and made it look like the husband shot the wife but there weren't any shell casings at all. Worst part about the whole story most of the members in the house the night of the murder were police officers off duty can't go to the cops with the information so I just try to forget I know about it. When we moved to the small town I grew up in, my mother was single, and needed a place to watch me and my brother. I was going into first grade, and my brother was in preschool. We were little. We ended up being watched by this lady who did in home child care, way too many kids in her big ranch style home on a plot of land at the edge of the town. Her husband was mayor, and sold used cars for a living from a tiny lot on the edge of the property. She got away with having way too many kids in an unlicensed facility, and an adult son who would come terrorize us kids. Especially me. He liked to chase me around the house with a butcher knife. My mother found out, and threatened to kill him if he came around again. We didn't stay with them just too much longer after that, but longer that I cared for. There just weren't other option available. They had a lot of money and influence in town, way too much for a used car salesman. The guy kept his drug-addled adult son out of prison, and not dead. Built his bitch daughter a new house when she got married right out of high school on another end of the property. Kept his wife in new cars and nice things. Even got a local bank branch opened with his influence. How did he manage that? by smuggling drugs in the cars he would bring up from South Texas. Had a nice racket for a number of years. Finally got out of the business. My mom sees him around town now and again. This isn't really a town secret but my mom was in the store and my dad was in the car when a guy started following my mom. He started asking her questions like, you alone, you got kids with you. She called my dad to grab the gun and escort her to the car. A while later the same man was on the news. He was arrested for kidnapping a lady. Back around 84 I began working at a power plant in North Alabama. The local news at that time was filled with the news that the notorious Dalton? 
family had finally been brought down. All day long there was news of how this particular family had run and terrorized an entire South Alabama county since the 1930s. There was also footage of them handcuffed and being shoved into squad cars. Believe me, these guys looked like everybody's idea of a backwoods hillbilly long beards, overalls, you name it. The next day at work, I was laughing about it and asked out loud how the hell did a family of hillbillies get to run and terrorize an entire county for so long? All of a sudden the entire office got quiet. It was then I realized I was an outsider to Alabama and that my use of the word hillbilly may have crossed the line. After a few moments of awkward silence, someone spoke up and said, Name withheld there is one of the Daltons. I looked at him. That deadpan look on his face told me that this was no joke. I immediately began profusely apologizing and trying to convince him I meant no harm. He sheepishly said, That all right. That's why my daddy moved us away from there. They were all trash. As I was reading this I asked my mom Hey mom, how did that guy from your hometown get away with shooting the husband that was abusing his wife? She answered because they had a town meeting about what to do about the husband, and they all decided someone should just kill him. The sheriff was the one that gave the order. When I first moved here, there was a murder just down the street from my junior high school. A dude snapped and killed his ex, dismembering her and storing her in a fridge. A friend of mine was interning with the sheriff our senior year and told me the cops still have the bloodied fridge in evidence. I am aware of several households that are on government watch lists. Only because I used to work for the same agency that has them under surveillance and know the vehicles and protocols used. I know a few of my former church's elders to be clansmen. This abandoned metal hospital where we used to smoke weed that was next to my high school is where they tested the polio vaccine on the mentally challenged patients. Third party info, so grain of salt, etc. School's band teacher got a divorce and was in the middle of moving between A and B, so he was storing some of his stuff in the band closet in the interim. Students get into his stuff and find a stack of Playboys teacher was fired. This guy wasn't a saint but he really cared about the kids in his bands he'd been at the school for at least 20 years. The getting fired thing pretty much killed him. He had to move over about 50 miles away from the area and he died at 54, I suspect of a broken heart. The guy that runs all our Nissan dealerships used to be a cocaine kingpin. There was a pretty well-off family in my town. They were involved in all kinds of shit like the city council, school board, etc. which ensured they had a good reputation and lots of connections. Well, one day their house burned down. Not just a fire. An explosion that blew almost an entire wall down. They said it was a gas fireplace malfunction. The whole town knew it was a meth lab explosion because their youngest son was a dumb fuck and couldn't keep a secret. A year or so later, their new home was being watched and the dad was eventually taken in on some pretty serious drug dealing charges, but the official story about their home is still that their fireplace blew up. 